A live action scene is changing continuously while each film frame is exposed, so faster moving objects leave more directional blur than slow ones. In contrast, stop motion animations are created by taking pictures of still or frozen scenes. Skilled animators balance the need for visual continuity with the speed an object is supposed to travel. Our algorithm for simulating motion blur is intended as a post-processing tool to help animators strike this balance more easily. The simulated motion blur shown here was generated using only the original frames as input. Input sequences are processed using a two-pass frame-to-frame motion estimation algorithm. The first pass identifies gross motions such as translation and rotation, and the second, an optical flow technique, attempts to refine the pixel's motion vectors by accounting for non-affine scene changes. For this example sequence, the first motion estimation pass detected the dominant left-to-right motion of the tricycle. The second pass identified local deformations in the scene, such as the feet operating the pedals. The blurred pixels are rendered in proportion to and along the path of each pixel's motion vector. Since the tricycle is rolling backwards and slowing down, the blur extends diminish automatically in proportion to the velocity. Note that a variation of our algorithm allows us to render the blurred pixels directly onto the background plate, accentuating the motion without showing the actual frames from the sequence. Previous work on re-rendering images with motion blur has trouble keeping rigid objects from warping unnaturally if their frame-to-frame -frame motion is too large. Sequences such as this one can be blurred effectively since rigidity is enforced by the first motion estimation pass and the resulting course alignment provides the correct starting point for the second pass. Our implementation runs completely automatically after the user specifies an input sequence and the desired shutter speed. We first simulated a rather slow shutter speed of 7 1 20th of a second. However, we reused the motion estimates to re-render with half the exposure time, retaining some of the blur without obscuring as much of the original detail. To evaluate our approach, we filmed the same motion with two cameras, set to different shutter speeds. On the left, we see the basketball through a fast shutter camera. We used these images as input, with the intent of simulating the slower shutter speed shown on the far right. The simulated motion blur is pictured in the middle. It successfully reproduces the motion blur of the right sequence while retaining the original contrast from the left. Finally, pictured are the before and after versions of processing a live action sequence which lacked motion blur because it was filmed with too fast a shutter.